What type of graph should you use? Time series, bar graphs, pie charts, scatter plots, and histograms. Let's look at the difference. A time series graph or a line graph shows how something changes over time. Typically on the x-axis you'll have some type of time, here we have days of the week, and on the y-axis we have the number of miles ran. With the way this data is displayed, we can see that Thursday, that's when the most miles were ran. Saturday was when the least miles were ran. So this time series graph or a line graph will show how something changes over time. Now there's plenty of other examples too, such as the value of a computer over time. Now on the x-axis we have the age of the computer in years, and we can see that the value of the computer is decreasing over time. When it was brand new, zero years, the value was $1,500. After five years, that value is around 450 bucks. That's what's in between $300 and $600. But again, a time series graph or a line graph, we're keeping track of how something changes over time. Now what about a bar graph? Bar graphs are good for organizing data into categories. In this case here, you can see movie genres at the bottom. These are our categories. The height of the bar corresponds in this case to the number of people. So just over 60 people picked comedy as their favorite movie genre. This is completely different than a time series graph because we're not tracking how something changes over time. We're actually looking at categories. And with each category, we have a bar. And it's worth mentioning that these bars do not really need to touch because these are completely different categories. Now, there are tons of other examples. Look at this one here. The vehicles in a parking lot, our categories are now the type of vehicles. The y-axis does show the number of vehicles, but I want you to see here that this is completely different than a time series graph. We're not tracking how something changes over time. A bar graph is good for breaking things up into categories and showing how many of that particular category occurred. Now with that said, we could take the same categories of vehicles in a parking lot and we can organize those into a pie chart or a circle graph. We can see here that cars nearly make up half of the vehicles, almost 50% of the vehicles in the parking lot. A pie chart's good with comparing percentages, and we can compare these percentages to the whole, 100%. Another quick example of a pie chart or circle graph is the monthly budget. We have several categories here. Just under 40% of the budget gets applied to the mortgage. But again, all of these percentages are getting compared to the whole. And in a circle graph, if you add up all the percentages, you should get 100%, which represents that whole. Now let's look at a scatter plot. Comparing two variables here, that's what a scatter plot does. We have height in inches, we have the shoe size. Height is a variable, shoe size is a variable. And what we can see here is that the height in inches, as it goes up on the x-axis, it looks like these Y values, the shoe sizes, are going up as well. This helps us see a type of relationship or trend between these two variables. And in this case, we can say as height goes up, shoe size goes up, which is an indicator of a positive relationship or a positive trend. But again, a scatter plot, we're looking at data and we're comparing two variables. In this case, the height of a person in inches versus their shoe size. Now let's look at this example of a scatter plot. Age versus salary. Age is a variable, salary is a variable, and we can literally see that these points are scattered all over the place. This is an indicator of no relationship. You can have both young and old people with very high salaries versus lower salaries. There is no relationship here in this scatter plot. And last but not least, we have a histogram. Age in years. If we look at the x-axis down here, these are little bins or classes or ranges of ages. So for example, zero to nine years old, there are roughly 120 people in this K-12 school that are somewhere between zero and nine years old. This is a range of values or a bin or a class. Do not confuse a histogram with a bar graph. A histogram will always have these little ranges or bins or classes. And with these ranges, these intervals on the x-axis, where one of the intervals ends, another one begins. And that's why you will notice that the bars on a histogram do border each other. They touch each other, and that is different 
than a bar graph, which separates the bars because a bar graph shows categorical data instead of these intervals and ranges. And to clarify that further, this has nothing to do with age. Now let's look at the time in minutes that a person spends in a bank. Somewhere between 0 and 4.9 minutes. Around 45 people spent somewhere in that time interval, in that time range in the bank. We can see that the fewest number of people spent somewhere between 10 minutes and 14.9 minutes. And over here, this means that we had roughly just under 30 people who spent more than 20 minutes in the bank. But again, the big idea here with the histogram, these values are ranges or bins or classes. And then we can compare that to the frequency of each bin, range, or class. So hopefully with these examples of line graphs or time series graphs, we can monitor how something changes over time. And then we have bar graphs where you can arrange things into categories and you can track the number of things in that particular category. Very similar, we can do the same thing with a pie chart or a circle graph, but oftentimes you're looking at percentages and you're comparing those percentages to the whole. But there is a similarity in what type of data we can use for both a pie chart and a bar graph. And then we discussed a scatter plot. We're comparing two variables and we can see what type of relationships exist, whether that be positive relationships, negative relationships, or no relationships. And then finally, we've finished up with histogram where the big thing is to look at the bins or classes or range of values. And then you can compare that to the frequency of that particular range of values. And with these bins or classes or intervals or ranges on the x-axis, where one of these intervals end, another interval begins, and that is why the bars on these histograms can touch, which is unlike bar graphs.